From the very beginning, Cardano has been criticised or even mocked as a result of taking the peer-reviewed approach. Whether this comes from a place of fear or misunderstanding, the facts of the matter still remain. The very ingredient that makes Cardano so unique, its technology and impact so inevitable, has formed the fundamental basis for the mainstream opinion to consistently discredit its approach and importance its very existence has on a space that's in dire need for radical change. This past weekend, for anyone taking note, has revealed a whole host of significant developments that continue to solidify Cardano, both as a force for good in this industry, and equally, a force to be reckoned with. From the decentralization index, the first Voltaire SIP, Midnight the Privacy Sidechain, to the introduction of the Ouroboros Laos SIP, if you fail to see the strides Cardano is making, not only from a technological standpoint, but from one that progresses this entire space forwards, then you're hugely misguided. But for me, probably the biggest reveal that came out of recent events that we in the community were already very much aware of is that Cardano, in taking what has been viewed by many as an unnecessary, time-consuming and ineffective approach to development, is in actual fact trailblazing and now far closer than any other chain to effectively solving the blockchain trilemma. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem. So let's get straight into it. Now for me, Scottfest of all the Cardano events, presentations and development updates delivered by IOG over the years was by far the best I've seen. I think when Charles originally announced that a live event would take place from the University of Edinburgh right before the Cardano summit, whilst it did feel more excitement, maybe it was viewed for many as a starter to the summit main course. But on reflection, with all that was revealed, the quality of presentations, impressiveness of the technology showcased, combined with the big reveals of Midnight, the EDI and the great scope provided on what's next in the roadmap for Cardano on its development, I think, as I predicted in the build-up, Scottfest was a defining moment in Cardano's journey and one that is going to be looked back upon as a flag in the ground for a major turning point for the direction this industry is no doubt going to take. One of the things that really stuck out for me was the sense of calm and conviction demonstrated throughout all the presentations across the two days. These were no sales pitches. IOG aren't trying to sell you anything, but rather communicate how through the peer-reviewed process, academic rigor, first-class engineering, and a gargantuan community effort, in Cardano, we can undoubtedly drive the mass adoption of blockchain technology and deliver a world financial and social operating system that will improve the lives of people on a global scale. Scottfest demonstrated to me something Charles has been communicating for many years. In the approach IOG has taken, in assembling a world-class team, from the research labs that span the globe, the peer-reviewed technology that forms every part of this blockchain, to the community that has evolved around it, all aligned in values and intent on seeing out this mission together, IOG know they've already won this so-called race for blockchain supremacy. As the scaling solutions come through and governance framework is implemented in practice, this is going to become evident to a much broader crypto audience, who up until now have been horrendously misguided by VC and mainstream narratives who have continually discounted the one blockchain that has remained true to all the fundamental principles this industry was founded upon. Charles has always maintained if you want to win the game you have to change the game and Cardano has been doing just that right from the very beginning when they decided the slow methodical scientific approach to blockchain development was the only way to attack the technological and societal issues faced with successfully bringing through an emerging technology and have the best chance in replacing legacy systems that are so deeply ingrained throughout the world's infrastructure. Now this week on Cardano Insights, we've already discussed some of the important developments that come out of Scottfest, from the progress surrounding the EDI, to the announcement of the data protection based blockchain Midnight that will form one of Cardano's sidechains. All very exciting and hugely impactful developments, but during the two day event, so much more was revealed and as promised, today we're going to delve a little deeper into one of the items that hasn't really taken much of the headlines, but holds great significance for Cardano's success moving forwards. So during Scottfest, IOG revealed the Cardano improvement proposal for input endorsers, which Charles tweeted out to the community whilst the event was unfolding. The draft SIP in itself outlines the proposed implementation of the Ouroboros Laos protocol, a new member of the Ouroboros family that is designed specifically for realising high throughput without compromising security to enable the blockchain to meet the expected future demands, providing a basis for continuing Cardano growth and scalability as the blockchain tackles the hurdles ahead that will come with onboarding a massive increase in user acquisition. Dr. Ben Beckman, Director of Software Architecture and Infrastructure at IOG, delivered a great presentation on input endorsers which offered an insight to exactly how Cardano intends to solidify the solving of the blockchain trilemma. Throughout the presentation he outlined how Cardano will supercharge transactions by combining the research that's been developed over the course of multiple years through the relationships with Professor Agalos and his team at the Edinburgh University and turning this research from papers to a functioning system that will become part of the core of Cardano. 
Input endorsers, which is based on five years of parallel architecture research, will enable higher transaction speed, throughput, while maintaining security, reducing cost, and expanding decentralization, a full-on assault of the blockchain trilemma. During the presentation, they provided a demonstration of a simulated environment, which is how IG have built the evidence that the solution they are proposing, developed through the research, can actually be implemented in a functioning system. The diagram you can see here is a simulation of a global network, the circles being block producers or SPOs, the squares being blocks moving through the network, the speed of which in the Cardano network's current state being one block per 20 seconds. With the introduction of this new traffic pattern and input blocks means that significant performance enhancements will be realised. This simulation demonstrates a forging rate of 5 blocks per second. Now when you consider these blocks are about 100 kilobytes in size, and this simulation environment has also considered various constraints, as Dr. Beckman puts it, he finds the results extremely impressive and gives him great confidence that as they move forward to implement the engineering effort, they'll be able to deliver something very close to the numbers forecast here. He then discussed impacts on diffusion latency. In Cardano, blocks must be diffused in 5 seconds. In the simulation, even with the much higher traffic rate being considered, 100% of block diffusion was achieved within the 5 second boundary. Further to this, in the top right, the histogram represents how much work is being done, referencing CPU usage and network resource. The constraint on the system means Cardano can only process 10 blocks per node per second, which limits the amount of work that can be done throughout the network. However, the simulation results also demonstrated that the network was operating at around half capacity, meaning they have the ability to run the system even faster if needed. When we think about some of the inefficiencies that are inherent with blockchains, the idea or need for the implementation of input endorsers becomes even more apparent. Specifically with block diffusion, the network has a limited amount of time that blocks need to be diffused, but a much longer period of time by which this needs to be completed. For example, if you have 5 seconds to diffuse a block over a 20 second time period, there's basically a 15 second period of idle activity. This opens up great opportunity for resources to be consumed that can be taken advantage of to dramatically improve throughput. So with the introduction of input endorsers, a new feature of Ouroboros, or specifically Ouroboros Laos, this will enable more transactions, support more demanding applications to be built on Cardano, create more opportunities for SPOs to forge more blocks, and in addition, really emphasizes IOG's ability to take the academic research and convert this into a live system through Cardano. Where it becomes even more interesting and a testament to Cardano's approach to governance and working with the community to progress the evolution of this blockchain, IOG made it perfectly clear that they are encouraging heavy participation through the SIP process to develop this concept further. The presentation then moved to the input endorser development journey, outlining exactly where IOG are at today in terms of delivery. So the key milestones as it stands, they have a clear protocol definition which is rigorously defined to ensure they can maintain the chain, manage the state and has various messages they can validate as they propagate across the network. As already discussed, in addition to this, they've already achieved the traffic simulation which will be continually built out to build an even stronger understanding of the computational and performance benchmarks that can be expected from the implementation of this system. Now that the SIP for input endorsers has been published, this will enhance the speed of development and open up a whole new world of opportunities for the great minds that we're blessed with in the Cardano ecosystem to contribute to its implementation and evolution of the best version of this system as possible. So we're now in the community review stage of this proposal, which is very encouraging, as from past experience, whenever the Cardano community gets their hands on the tech, wonderful things begin to happen. Input Endorsers and Ouroboros Laos is an extremely important piece of the Cardano development puzzle. I don't claim to understand even a fraction of the overall complexity of it, but in essence, its arrival and impact was summarised very concisely nearing the end of this presentation. First and foremost, it enables the chain to achieve more transactions, utilising more resources for more throughput, enabling parallelism of block production, whilst maintaining the same level of security we benefit from today thanks to the beast that is Ouroboros. One of the major changes the chain will experience as a result of this significant undertaking is it will form a concurrent blockchain, meaning block production will occur concurrently, enabling the introduction of new novel technologies such as prioritization of traffic, but more intriguingly, it will separate smart contract execution from extending the chain. What this means is, by introducing this concept, Cardano will be able to validate transactions and execute scripts outside of the chain extension process, leading to exceptional speed improvements for chain synchronization. When you consider that input endorsers will be built on top of Cardano's rock-solid foundations, which are academically peer-reviewed, proven with formal methods, and real-world battle-tested, solving the blockchain trilemma looks very much in touching distance. This upgrade will be achieved close in collaboration with the community, and in the same way that all Cardano developments or upgrades have been undertaken throughout the years of the roadmap being rolled out, careful in its approach, considered, and ultimately, when it's fully baked, seamlessly delivered. 
Following on from the community's involvement in the Vassal upgrade and those all-important SIPs, Input Endorsers and Ouroboros Laos will form not only a significant part of Cardano's scalability era, but will also be massively interconnected with the progress against Voltaire and governance. For such a technological feat to be realised in a truly decentralised manner requires the community's involvement just as much as it requires the involvement of IOG, and it's going to be incredible to witness this all take place. What's materialising here is the evolution of a system, an ecosystem, a technology that is being built and delivered in an approach that's the polar opposite to any other blockchain in existence, one that's being developed in layers that as a result is becoming more expressive, more secure, more decentralised and scalable as each piece of the technology puzzle is implemented and each phase of the roadmap is rolled out. So that's it for today's instalment of Cardano Insights as we keep track of the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content and want to help Sapien achieve more throughput, then please be sure to comment, share, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, which is the best way you can help support the channel. We'll be back soon with your daily roundups. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day and as always, keep it Cardano.